Let's move on to uh, a clip of Tucker Carlson. Oh, yay. Um, since we are sort of New York adjacent here, uh, we played the clip earlier of Pete Buttigieg using as an example of how infrastructure, literally infrastructure, can be racist. If you spend 30 seconds thinking about it, you could probably come up with an example on your own if you have been in your community in your community yeah. i mean just like wonder where like where's the town dump ask yourself where's the town dump where's the um where's the uh, the big um uh, electrical you know thing with all the the you know the, the where do you see the smokestack yeah where, where the smokestack where I mean, land? Yeah. Right. So I mean where, all yeah. of that just think about it and say like, hey, why is it there as opposed to over in that nice neighborhood? Most people know this. Some people are a little bit ignorant about the history. Here's a guy who's absolutely not ignorant about this history. He is a charlatan who is um, willing to use racism and bigotry to make money and to espouse fake history and um i give you tucker carlson roads are made of sand and gravel and asphalt ask any road builder roads cannot be racist any more than toasters or sectional couches can be racist they are inanimate objects they're not alive that seems obvious but apparently pete Buttigieg judge didn't know it or maybe he did know it but he was afraid to say it in any case here's how he responded I'm still surprised that some people were surprised when I pointed to the fact that uh, if a highway was built for the purpose of di dividing a white and a black neighborhood, or if an underpass was constructed such that a bus carrying mostly black and Puerto Rican kids uh, to a beach, or it would have been, uh, in New York was, was designed uh, too low for it to pass by, but that obviously reflects racism that went into those design choices. Here we have news. According to the Department of, tra of transportation. The secretary overpasses in New York were designed to keep buses of black and Puerto Rican kids from getting to the beach. And yet here's the amazing part. Those very same overpasses somehow allow buses full of white kids to get through. That sounds like magic. How does it work? Well, it's possible the overpasses that Buttigieg referred to are actually drawbridges manned by vigilant bigots with binoculars. Here comes the Puerto Rican bus. Lower the overpass. You may laugh, but in a systemically racist country, it's entirely possible. Or maybe come to think of it, the problem is the buses themselves. In New York, uh, children are yes. being turned into a. Uh, I mean, just put up the clip. Put up the clip right now, just so that the the morons. There, there's the, going to the be screenshot. Yeah, the screenshot of of Robert Moses is. Um, uh, we can of, read it of again. The book. Yeah. Yeah. Let's read it again in the middle of this. Now he began to limit access by buses. He well, we should we just say this is um, uh, this is uh, Caro's book on Robert Moses. The power broker. Robert Moses was a New York um, uh, maybe power bureaucrat. Broker. You would call him. <laughs> yeah, head bureaucrat of transportation. Yeah, of basically. transportation. A huge racist and designed things in these ways because there weren't massive buses of white kids coming out to Jones Beach because most of the white people lived closer to the beach. Yeah. He had restricted the use of state parks by poor and lower middle class families in the first place by limiting access to the parks by rapid transit. He had vetoed the Long Island Railroad's proposed construction of a branch spur to Jones Beach for this reason. Now he began to limit access by buses. He instructed Shapiro to build the bridge across his new parkways low, too low for buses to pass. Bus trips therefore had to be made on local roads, making the trips discouragingly long and arduous. For Negroes, he, whom he considered inherently dirty, there were further measures. Buses needed permits to enter state parks. Buses chartered by Negro groups find it very difficult to obtain permits. I don't know if is that the permits the aren't racist. Is Wait, that... permits aren't racist. Everybody knows permits aren't racist. How is that possible? It's an inanimate object. He Tucker wants his audience to believe that these divisions are ordered in a way that make sense biologically. That's what he wants to say well, by obscuring that by obscuring that 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 history. I'm curious if he is aware of redlining and if he would defend redlining because this is a loophole of redlining. Of course he's aware of all of this. Continue to play. He is a liar. Wait, not he's to mention, liar. before we just backstory for this real quick, he, he, Moses is also responsible for public housing and, and part of the redlining that occurred in most of the redlining that occurred in New York, in New York City.
Yeah, this is the guy we trusted with public housing, in case you want to draw any examples from that. Again, and I mentioned this earlier in the show, the same guy that made sure that the public pools that white people had access to that were in whiter areas were significantly warmer and the black pools a little bit colder so that they wouldn't be using the public facilities that he divinely created. So you're saying temperature is racist. Yeah. Temperature is racist. How is that possible? We all know that's not the case. Here, good, continue. Here we have news. According to the Department of, Tra of Transportation, the secretary overpasses in New York were designed to keep buses of black and Puerto Rican kids from getting to the beach. And yet here's the amazing part. Those very same overpasses somehow allow buses full of white kids to get through. That sounds like magic. How does it work? Well, it's possible the overpasses that Buttigieg referred to are actually drawbridges manned by vigilant bigots with binoculars. Here comes the Puerto Rican bus. Lower the overpass. You may laugh, but in a systemically racist country, it's entirely possible. Or maybe come to think of it, the problem is the buses themselves. In New York, children of color are being herded into unusually tall buses, like those top-heavy double-deckers they used to have in London that the Beatles sang about, just to prevent them from reaching the ocean. You can't get to the beach in a bus like that. And we don't know exactly what's happening here, but we agree with people to judge 100% that it's morally wrong. It's not who we are. So thank heaven he's got a trillion dollars to get to the bottom of the racist road problem in this nation. You also have That's a it for us. team that you have a production team that could just Google Robert Moses. Oh, and he knows I know, all this. I know, but like the, yeah. He knows it. all he this. Knows, he studied he Robert Moses. He knows it all. In yeah. 1986 or when he went to Trinity, they, he this was a, this was a signed reading. He knows this. He loves it. He knows it. Just two minutes riffing on bullshit. He knows it. And he, he, his project is to uphold these, these divisions. And again, I'm going to use this word for the millionth time, naturalize them. And so he purposefully pretends like, oh, this is just common sense in order to make sure that these systems continue in the way that, you know, I mean, he, he laughs at what even is a white supremacist? It's the same thing that he does there. He wants to hide how these things look so that these things continue. It's really Simon, impressive. It's really has impressive. Has Robert Caro responded? Uh, how dark. Um, didn't Caro die recently? He might no. Have... Oh, no, no, he didn't die. Oh, my gosh, no. Um, I don't know if he has, but I, th I think, like, the historical, some historical society put out some, like, on, on Instagram, like, his actual tally marks when he was counting up who was coming to which beach and how absolutely racialized it was, and, yeah. For context, this is the same Robert Carroll who wrote the LG, LBJ series and yeah. has one still work, he's working on and just does so much research. It's like, like one of the all time greats. Yeah, really. Dan from Columbus, majority reports crowdfund a scholarship for a member to go to Barry Weiss's new university. <laughs> See how long it takes a student to get kicked out for constantly talking about Palestine. It's tough because it's it, that costs about as much as it costs to get in to the dinner with uh, 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 what's his name from Ohio and Peter Thiel, um, J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance. <laughs> Observer, Wednesday, Tuesday, what day, Forge day, five day, slacker day, it's fun day. That was from the opening. Uh, Pink Lady, can we not forget that Nancy Pelosi said, I knew there were no weapons in mass destruction and add that to your lest we forget Jim Jordan atrocity corner? Sure. Um, Train Boy, here's how racist Robert Moses was. All of his New York City playgrounds are beautiful works, each decorated to gel with the neighborhood. There's a playground in Brooklyn by the beach that is all aquatic in design. The one near Central Park Zoo has all sorts of animals. When he finally got around to making his only playground in Harlem, one of 137, the design motif he chose to use, monkeys. He was also uncircumcised. Ooh. Okay. Um, I don't know what that last part has to do with anything. I, I, I don't Thanks know. Thanks for that. Fun, fun I, fact. <laughs> I also wonder how uh, Train Boy uh, was aware of that. Train Boy just he read the book. <laughs>